Okay, it's uh, seven o'clock. Call this meeting to order of the Planning Commission. Uh, Judy, you want to call the roll? Yeah. Reed. Here. Toby. Here. Sims. Here. Styles. Here. Pelzel. Here. Also present is uh, Planner John Young, Alternate Adam Abraham, and Solicitor for the Village Chris Connor. Thank you. Uh, we have the agenda. Some of us have the agenda in front of us. And uh, is there any additions or modifications anyone would suggest? Um, if not, we'll go on to the review of the meeting minutes. Uh, they're in front of us. And uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at them. Um, the, uh, anyone have any comments? Um, changes to page one. My name is misspelled. Last name. Eli. First paragraph. Okay. Anything else? Page two. Page three. Page three under uh, recommendations. It has the motion being moved, but it doesn't have a second or the vote. Yeah, and I'll get that in. Thank you. Anything else on page three? Page four. Page five. Page six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Or 11. I mean, Judy does say these minutes are not verbatim, but I think they might be They're pretty extensive. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have no communications. Do you, can you oh, you want to approve them, maybe? Yes. <laughs> yeah, do we have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So, second. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 I abstain. Okay. Okay, next item on the agenda is communications. We have none, I believe. Uh, item after that is citizens comment. This is a period of time when you can address the planning commission on any agenda or item that is not on the agenda. Anyone have any, uh, any comments? Okay. Um, we have no consent items. So the next item is the continuation of the public hearing on the, for the right-of-way vacation um, um, that has been requested by Antioch for East Herman Street. Um, I don't know if we need to go through all the intimate details of the, f of the uh, proposal. Um, I know we do need to talk, you need to go through your um, ongoing discussions that you've had in the last month with the college. Mm -hmm. So do you want to give a two minute version of the original proposal and then go from there with your discussions? All right. Uh, this is an application submitted by Antioch College in December uh, for the uh, vacation of East Herman Street right away as identified uh, on the attached uh, documentation and the staff reports. Uh, the college has requested the village vacate the right-of-way of, of Eastern portion of Herman Street between the cul-de-sac at Herman to Corey Street. The portion of the uh, vacation is a 25-foot wide section of street that is 1,022 feet in length. It is a paper street. It was heard on December 8th in 2014. However, the planning commission decided to table that application. Um, 
and then the Planning Commission again tabled it at the last month's meeting. It is zoned E1 Education Zoning District. When uh, looking at the code of ordinances regarding criteria for right of a vacation, the Planning Commission must re review the relationship between the proposed action of the Yellow Springs Comprehensive Plan Development Plan, uh, look at staff recommendations concerning such things as present land use, adjacent property access, utility easement, and transportation needs, look at the validity of the applicant's reasons for requesting the vacation, uh, hear general citizen reaction to the proposed vacation, and uh, also note the abutting property owner support or lack thereof of the proposed vacation. Uh, the Planning Commission can approve, deny, or conditionally approve, uh, recommend, recommend those three items to uh, three actions to Village Council regarding this vacation request. At the last meeting, Planning Commission asked staff to work with the applicant to find out some more information. Um, the staff met with um, the applicant, uh, the agent of the applicant, Reggie Stratton, on uh, a couple weeks ago with our street supervisor, Jason Hamby. Uh, the items that the Planning Commission was looking for was uh, get some clarification on the concerns regarding the EPA regulations, uh, figure out uh, the need for the minimum uh, easement uh, with reach an agreement with uh, the applicant regarding the access, the maintenance of access uh, for utilities on the right of way, uh, make a decision regarding the cul de sac, and also specify water line access for the properties along President Street. At the meeting, we reviewed many of these items. We found that uh, an agreement that a 13 foot easement for a sewer line, sewer line access would be acceptable that limiting uh, fencing for uh, proposed uh, farm development along the north side of the easement would uh, accommodate both the applicant and the needs of village uh, sewer crew, uh, that animal grazing will not encroach within six feet of the existing sewer manhole, which is located in the middle of the right of way, and that uh, the village of Antioch will address the expansion of the cul-de-sac at Herman once there are more defined plans regarding that project. Um, we talked, we reviewed the issue regarding the environmental concerns, uh, felt that staff and the applicant felt that the, uh, those concerns are premature because the college had not yet applied uh, to expand their farming operation, although they have indicated they intend to do so in the future, and that is an issue that we will uh, address at the time of that application. Uh, however, it does not pertain to the uh, street vacation um, as the runoff uh, coming from the storm, storm water in that area actually flows m largely outside of the street that is proposed to be vacated. At the meeting, uh, Mr. Hamby specified that he needed a minimum of six to seven feet on both sides of the, ex the existing sanitary sewer line for vacuum truck access. Um, we discussed this and, uh, and reviewed the access path for that vacuum truck and, uh, and that access will be maintained. Uh, they we both reached an agreement regarding the fence and the gate concerns and access, which is where the uh, applicant agreed to limit the fencing to one side of the proposed easement. And then uh, we both agreed that the uh, discussion for the call section should occur at a future time. And then finally, uh, it was determined by staff after I reviewed the uh, water distribution plan with uh, Johnny Burns that uh, the road vacation will not affect access to water lines behind the houses on the east side of President Street. Uh, with this new information, staff has reviewed the findings and recommends that the Planning Commission uh, recommend to Village Council the application be uh, approved with the conditions uh, a 13 foot wide easement for sewer line access may, will be maintained, that any fencing along the easement will be limited to the north side of the easement, uh, and any animal grazing from the current and future farm use will not encroach within six feet of the existing sewer manhole. And then finally, uh, the village and Antioch will work together to address the expansion of the cul-de-sac at Herman once more to find plans are made regarding the project. Do you have any questions regarding my report? Any questions for John? So in a nutshell, John, it sounds like you're satisfied in terms of? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, the applicant, anything to add? Yeah, so uh, be, uh, before we dive right into that, we should probably untable and then reopen the hearing. So we need a motion to reopen the hearing. Oh, uh, we do. Well, just to be procedurally correct. No, you're correct. Because we did make a motion to close it. Well, the table, which I Or meant, table it, rather, right, yes. 
Right. I move we reopen the hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, it is mainly a question of access uh, for the village utilities and to that manhole. And um, when I met with John and Jason, um, we talked about various options. Jason seemed very opposed to any fencing crossing the easement. Uh, we talked about putting gates uh, where it crosses that would not be locked uh, so that he could have easy access to it. Um, and he still seemed resistant to that idea and that's why we landed on the uh, keeping the fence to the north side of the easement. However, in talking with my colleagues, Nick Budis here and the farm manager, Kat, um, the garden expansion uh, encroaches a significant area of, it goes beyond the easement. Um, so what they're proposing is that we use the gates, which would be unlocked, and that the uh, area of the easement, which is seven feet to either side, uh, just be natural path. Um, we wouldn't grow on that so that whenever the uh, trucks had to access to that manhole, they could open the gate, drive through the gate to the manhole, or actually anywhere along that easement clear to Quarry Street, um, unobstructed, with only, with only the gates to open. So at this point, we're kind of pushing back a little bit and asking you to consider the, the gates as a possibility. Um, as I said, I mean, I, it, I don't know if you were going to put the map up again or show the, uh, if you had that in the queue, but. Mm -hmm. We have the map right here. Yes. So, um, and looking at that map. There's two, the five year vision map is a more useful. Yeah, the five year is what we were looking at in the last meeting. So you can see as, as the garden moves to the east, it expands out further and encourages <coughs> that easement quite a bit. Um, so we're proposing a natural path through there, maintaining that 14 foot wide path with gates on either end. Otherwise, what we'd have to do is fence two sections of the garden. Uh, kind of just like we did the solar array, um, which is not that practical. And of course, we'll add costs to, to the project to add that much more fence. So again, we're just asking if the Planning Commission would consider that. We, we believe it to be a reasonable request. and. Um, we would put gates that are wide enough. It may end up being, you know, two rolling gates or whatever, but he said he needed at least that 14 feet because the vac trucks are very large. Um, so he'd like to be able to drive right off the end of Herman on the flatter part of the, the ground there and to the manhole. Okay. Uh, John, uh, you spent time with this. Um, what's the... Uh, objection to the gates as opposed to the sewer department would need to have access unobstructed access to that manhole and the gates would be something that would would be an obstacle to that um, it, according to the superintendent gates are, are something that uh, from from his perspective are completely off the table really okay where is the manhole it would be like right, right here I could locate it. I just walked it again tonight. So it sits right about there. Okay, so like in the middle of the garden. Yeah. He said right here. Okay. I think it's out in here. So. Okay. Any questions for? Reggie? Um, I'm wondering when the new fence goes up, will, I guess this is, might be a question for you, um, does the college need a building permit, any kind of permit to do that? 
You would need a fence, a fence permit. permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that only relates to the height, yeah. right? The height and placement of, Place. of the fence, yeah. Now, <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to visualize it here on, on this handout. Um, I want to make sure I understand what what you had initially agreed upon was a was a fence to the north of basically seven foot to the north side of the sanitary line. Okay, and okay. Now is this the uh, the, the uh, 1.8 acre garden that I'm looking at, or because I see two, two gardens, a 1.6 acre and a 1.8 acre with a. It's all about your Herman Street. Street. It's, it's right here, Jerry. Right. So they're talking Herman about fence. They agreed to this fence right here, which essentially cuts the garden in half mm -hmm. as planned. Okay. Is that correct? Okay, so now they're now so he would like to put a gate here and a gate here, so they could use the entire area of the garden and have a path, just a path okay. there, okay. Right. So they like could a gravel path. Right grass. here, grass. Okay. That was the original agreement, but now yeah. Reggie's saying that they would like to just go ahead and keep this same shape and put gates. Sure. Nick Budas in my position as the well, and, director. And let me just say, we're going to open the public hearing here, okay. too. So. All right. Yeah. Well, in my position as the director of the Glen Holiday College Institute, I'm the supervisor for the Antioch Farm, which is what brings me here today. Um, and in talking with our, our farm manager, she uh, reiterated the uh, dysfunction, if you will, of taking that parcel and, and bisecting it uh, with the fence. Fences are, are a necessity um, uh, to keep Bambi out of uh, the garden areas, and um, uh, it just so happens by nature of where the campus is relative to the, um, the right-of-way that, that this area that we'd be trying to grow um, vegetables in is, is split in half. Uh, and if I could just draw your attention kind of to the, oh, about um, uh, 7 o'clock on that little uh, garden, you can see that that area gets pinched off uh, fairly narrow on the, uh, to the south of the, um, of the right of way. It would be very difficult to, to have a, a meaningful area within, within a fenced in area that narrow. It, it, would, uh, it would impact our ability to manage the, the garden in that area, which would probably result in us needing to change the area where we'd want to, uh, to plant vegetables out there. Uh, I appreciate the, um, uh, the, the position of, of uh, uh, the person to be maintaining the, um, uh, the sewer line, that it's an inconvenience to uh, access the the manhole by way of opening a, a, a fence, but understand from, from our position that uh, if, we, uh, if we don't have that access, that it, on a daily level would mean a, a fairly significant inconvenience in being able to use uh, that piece of property uh, as opposed to a, a theoretical or, or occasional inconvenience on those occasions when, uh, when the manhole would need to be accessed. Thanks. Do we know how frequently they have used the manhole or have had to access it? I know that the uh, manhole would need to be vacuumed out at least uh, every couple times a year and then any type of routine maintenance after that. I, uh, would, I'm sure Jason would have more of a complete detail of what the schedule is with that manhole. And I guess I know you've already, we already talked about this, but what is his objection to a that could be that's not locked with utility easements you need to have a free and clear access at all times in case of some sort of emergency if let's say there's a sewer line break or something like that and you need to get in there uh, to to fix that you would need to have ready and available access to that and, um, and a gate would not provide that a gate would, would not provide that at, at, 
and that level of for for emergency situations or for anything else. So, typically, easements do not are not obstructed with gates or fences. Uh, we've recently agreed to an easement with the village that uh, includes the stipulation that a gate unlocked gate be included. So I know that there's at least that one precedent, uh, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are other examples of, of utility easements in the uh, in the village that are obstructed by all manner of what is that uh, what is that easement uh, that's the uh, the water line running from a uh, village o, uh, water treatment plant uh, the south edge of Glen Helen uh, through Glen Helen to uh, uh, towards towards the water towers okay N let me ask this Apparently, you weren't involved with the discussions that they that they had with with uh, Jason and and John when they agreed upon it. That's correct. He was okay, not. so sounds like there was a lack of communication there at the college because well, that, there, that, there, that you were. And, and the reason I, the reason I say that is that you know. Uh, See, I'm, I'm kind of uncomfortable having to make a decision when we send our staff out and they talk with you folks and then we come to, to a meeting and then we want to change without our superintendent uh, being here and kind of relying on, on putting the kind of on John. Uh, well, so Jason's comment was, his answer was no, no game. That was his answer when John and I met out there. Correct, and and that's um, when the because if I remember correctly, the the fence was going to go all the way to the bike path initially. When you, when you talked about a fence, you were talking about enclosing that that whole area, and that you're going to have a a padlock, which you know, it would be locked, which we didn't like. I mean, the, the so, five-year plan for the farm would be to have more fencing that would run the perimeter of the south campus, but not the fencing for the gardens as we described. See, because it, it, it looks like we're, we're back again to the, to the full things with an open. <laughs> Am, am I understanding that correctly now? Well, I think what he wants to do oh, is fence garden. this garden with the two gates. That's, I think, the... We're not talking about the solar array at all. No, 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 okay. no, no. We're, we're, we're talking about the... Uh, because I believe the initial discussion, the fence was going to go the whole way, right? Was it? I, because because it... Because it looks like now we have a, a half a fence, is what we agreed about. It would have, there would be a fence, uh, and what are you saying? The what our agreement was when we met on site, or no? I'm talking about the the initial proposal. See, because the, the initial proposal here has a fence on one side of the animal garden, the other side has a is the fence off of the cul-de-sac. So if you look at the cul-de-sac and you look past where that red line is, correct. Uh, there's a, like a rounded fence there. That's the fence on the uh, west side of the garden. And then, uh, and then there's another fence in between the pathway, the garden, the pathway, and the solar array. There's a fence right there in this drawing. Okay, John, I'm still kind of dumb here. I, don't, I just don't see. See, I see the solar array with mm -hmm. the path going through the solar array, mm -hmm. okay? And just the north of that is the annual garden, okay? That we're, that's in question. 
the garden is, yeah. is, uh, is southern west. is west of that right yeah, okay. so, so that's, that's the gardening question okay they initially proposed to fence that whole garden area correct yeah as shown in the drawing. as shown in the drawing okay. so then what was agreed upon was to only put a fence to huh. the north of the easement. Of the, of the easement. easement, yes. Okay. Which means then your garden would just be, they would fence just this portion. Oh, okay. So they're talking about fish, fencing. Just that northern half the of this southern half. garden. And so what Nick is saying okay. is then okay, if so you put a fence down here, you've got this odd little shape. You can't really come out here because that's where that well, swale see, is. See, I don't see the odd little shape. Um, it John? looks like it's <clears throat> Well, what he's saying it though, too much to ask Reggie to draw the proposed is if he puts another fence here, I, yeah, you can do now that. you've got this here. area down here that's not as okay, useful. But, here. But I didn't think that's what they're talking about. I thought they were talking about. Yeah, so what he's saying is if you yeah. fits just then, that portion. What we were, we were discussed is putting it up here, this right? This is the existing garden. This is the well, advantage. they would have to fence it to keep the deer out. <laughs> But it's going to be okay. this oblong shape, and this western part of it is not going to be as useful. So here's that. Okay, that's what I was trying to visualize. The, that the fence you can see goes where this way. Okay. Right the right easement the cuts through right. here. Okay, and then what you had talked about is having a fence on this, just this side. This well, Jason had wanted the fence to stay north. Of the easement. Okay. Now, I didn't say I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't fence in the other section of the farm or of the garden. What I told Jason and John, you'll remember this, is there would be no animal pens encroaching the easement, and we, we, the animal pens would be further south on South Campus. So I think there's a little miscommunication going on there. What we'd like to avoid is having to fence this little area off and fence this little area off and leave this open path through here. We'd rather fence this whole area, gate here, gate here, and we wouldn't grow in this path here. We'd keep this 14-foot wide path coming through. Okay. Okay. Now I see. Okay. Okay, any other questions for the applicant? Well, I guess if you can't do the gates and you don't want to do a fence there, is there any other solution for you? Well, as Nick mentioned earlier, they'd have to rethink how they're going to place the garden, and it may put it in an undesirable spot as far as the soil quality and conditions. Um, the other option is split it in half and two halves, which you know, as Nick said, it would be tough to manage just two areas that small. So having like the whole thing fenced except for the area where you were going to have gates, your feeling is because that would leave an opening for deer, other animals to come in. It would have to be walked around. No, not necessarily. They would have just put up a gate. Our gate. Uh, our, our existing garden provides a somewhat of an example of the kind of um, porosity we can tend to have. That, that, uh, uh, that garden has gates that are publicly accessible uh, on, on each of its four sides. And those, are, those are unlocked and anybody wanting to walk the area is able to go and open the gate uh, before they close the gate and, and, and enter the site. Uh, we'd imagine something similar here where it would have <coughs> several access points but where the right-of-way would be sufficiently large for, uh, for a vehicle to ingress and, uh, and, and egress. Okay. Uh, uh, to answer Susan's question, we're, we're really trying to thread a needle in some ways on, on where we site, um, where to grow things out there. Uh, Soil has to be decent, uh, and every place that we put the geothermal array 
you almost can't grow there because it takes the soil layer and just flips it over. Um, we also accommodate drainage for a number of the properties that are, uh, that are west of us, uh, and that creates a swale that goes across, across that land from west to east. Uh, and that swale is, is just on the south side of what we anticipate as the, the annual growing area. So we can't, uh, we have to respect that, that flow of water and, and can't, um, uh, can't put any uh, annual growing area, uh, annual growing garden stuff in that area. Uh, so we're really fairly limited to the area north of the swale, which is why uh, the, the proposed garden after lots of back and forth, is the best place that we have for growing um, growing vegetables on site for, for student activity. Okay, um, I think what I'll do here is we can continue this discussion, but let's open the microphone up for public comment, and then we'll come back to this. And uh, but let's hear from anyone else who has anything to say. So, if anyone has anything to add to this uh, topic. Step forward, introduce yourself, and let her rip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Maureen Lynch. I'm a trustee of the college, and I'm on the facilities committee. And I, I really just learned about this at our, at our meeting today. And I don't really have anything to add. I want to. I know that the uh, the village has been very cooperative in, in helping Antioch expand and do the things we want to do. And I. Well, thank you for that, and hope that somehow we can work this out so that it's a, a decent solution for everybody. That's it. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, anyone else? Well, in that case, we'll close the public comment portion of this hearing and come back to the discussion. I mean, I think the crux of it is is. Jason doesn't want the gates. Um, is it unreasonable for Jason to not want the gates? Um, it would, like Jerry said, I think, be very helpful to have him here um, to hear that firsthand. Um, that being said, though, this is about the sixth month that we've talked about this in one fashion or another. Well, so I'm sure go ahead. <laughs> Reggie doesn't want to <laughs> delay too much longer. Can I just make a couple of comments based on what I've been observing here? Uh, one is, you know, Jason felt comfortable that we had reached an agreement with this, which is why he was not here today. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, having him here and addressing these things at the, at the hearing will probably be beneficial to give you guys some perspective from the staff issue because staff is the one that will be maintaining the sewers and accessing them. So uh, if he has legitimate concerns, uh, those should be voiced at this meeting. Uh, the second thing is I just want to review exactly what we're approved, what we're reviewing here as a, as, a, as a commission. This is for a, a street vacation, not for uh, the operation of a farm or the expansion of a farm. Uh, so although this might be something that's in the college's future plans, it's not a material application before the planning commission at this time. This is not an application that is uh, assuming de facto that this farm use expansion would actually move forward if it is indeed in, uh, applied to by the Planning Commission. And if any conditions are applied to the, by the Planning Commission at the time of the application of the farm use, then that could also factor into this. So with that, I would move that to, to say perhaps we would want to, the, the Commission it would be wise for the commission to review this the street vacation when the school brings the farm use expansion application to the commission. Uh, any further discussion? I, I guess I'm just kind of thinking the same thing is just take the fence out of it and know that the fencing would have to be reviewed when the farm this annual garden is identified, and and then we can hear from Jason also, and kind of not do this over, but at the same time allow this this 
at least the vacation to proceed. This would go to village council where it would have a hearing as well. Right. Um, so you could add in a condition in that say that, that the access to existing utilities, adequate access to existing utilities would be maintained uh, at a uh, distance of the, uh, the width that he proposed, which is the uh, 13. 13 feet, yes. Yeah, I mean, that's your first condition anyway, right? The 13 foot wide easement with, for sewer line access will be maintained, period. Yes. And then the fence, does that go through Planning Commission first? Um, the fence is just a fence application. And you can if, it, right? the, if the farm is expanded, yeah. it is a conditional use in the Education One district. So it would have to come back to, the plan would have to come back to the Planning Commission for for review. Even the gar just the garden? Um, for just the garden, I would have to double check that, but it is part of the whole educational farming initiative. So um, they would have to apply for conditional use to grow a garden there. If it's just the garden, probably not. But if it's including any type of animal, because currently there's animal uh, chicken coop rotation on there right now, but um, if it if it did include an animal component, it wouldn't be go back to the planning commission. So, but there are animals there. Yes, I mean if they had more animals. Okay. So if the garden was to be expanded today, uh, they may be able to have approval for that. The fence, of course, would require a fence permit at that time. Staff would review if there are any easements that need to be maintained as of any fence application and then uh, decide from there. So, yeah, that would be a staff level uh, determination. So, Chapter 1258 Scheduled District Uses says that for education that agribusiness is a conditional use, that farm, including raising animals, conditional, food processing, conditional. Greenhouse nursery is permitted as long as it's not for retail sales and community gardens are permitted. So it sounds like it would have to come back. It would not have to. It would. It would. Community gar gardens are permitted. permitted. Those are permitted. permitted. What is this? What would it be? A farm, including I raising looked, animals. Yeah, I looked at it as sustainable farming, including raising animals. Really? Because they're growing grass there right now. I mean, I don't really understand what the difference between growing grass and vegetables is in the zoning. I mean, well, it's, it, the five-year plan right now really sounds like it's a, allowed. That they would have to apply for the fence, but no, I mean, I think there's a lot, a lot of differences. There's, there's for one, animals, and you know, you're more closer to residents there. I think that's why it was put as a conditional use is because you know we've never formally been but they, they we've haven't never applied formally, for animals yet They're well i know they haven't applied garden. for anything yet yeah. there well, we have applied for a fence for that area okay um, with the understanding that we would grow vegetables there so i have a little bit of catch-22 listening uh, to, to this conversation mark because we're we don't intend to, uh, to do animal grazing in that area. Um, and we do intend, once we've figured out uh, the uh, details of, of our proposed grazing area, to bring that before, before this body for, for your consideration. But, um, uh, but we know what we want to do with, um, with the annual garden, and we proposed that. In, uh, uh, in submitting our fence application last year. So we can't get started on growing anything there until we, uh, until we get this detail sorted out. Has the fence, fence been approved? Yeah. The fence is, wasn't approved because of the right of way issue. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. OK. And you have that application? I might need it again, but I'll double check. <laughs> <laughs> Being new, new to the job. So then right now what we're talking about is just looking at it, just a 13 foot wide easement for the sewer line access will be maintained. And we're looking at taking the other things off. 
Is that correct? Well, it may be you take the fencing off. But it sounds like these guys are ready to proceed, so we need to probably resolve this in some fashion. Um, Can I maybe lean on the, the village council for this? It, it, it seems to me that there are four sequential issues here. One is the, the issue of the right of way, and does the village need to maintain that right of way? The second is the uh, utility easement, and what is the language of that easement, and what is it? guarantee the village access to and does that easement need to be updated in some way because maybe that, that access easement was drafted at the same time that the right of way was in place. The third is the fence permit which is uh, before, uh, before the village now and maybe needs to be resubmitted. And the fourth which will happen sometime in the future and we're not ready yet is a proposal to, um, to the zoning commission uh, to consider a conditional use permit for the area beyond what we're talking about today, the southern part of the, the south campus. And I think you're right. I mean, uh, part of the problem I think here, though, is, is that there was a time six months or nine months ago um, where there was a discussion about bringing this plan and, and having a discussion um, here in the council, and that's no, that's not happened as far as I know. No, it hasn't. We're and, not ready yet. And, and so, you know, we're kind of doing things piecemeal, and so you get these questions raised, and some of them you can't answer, maybe, because you're not ready yet. Um, uh, so, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, um, there was, at one point, this, uh, um, at least a discussion about having this more broad, at least a broad brush <laughs> discussion about the plan for the South Campus. And, and, and in many ways, it's, we're not ready for that discussion, but in many ways, it's reflected in the documents before you in principle, uh, that we intend to uh, create an opportunity for, for ecological agriculture with students and the full breadth of, of what that entails, uh, where plants and animals work together to fertilize the landscape. Um, but no surprise to everybody that Antioch is not flush with dollars and can't necessarily move forward with all of our plans as quickly as we might like. Um, so uh, this is one of those uh, things that as we've looked at how to phase in uh, growing the farm to meet the growing number of uh, college students, we're, we're taking one, one bite at a time and, and we know what we want to do, the details of what we want to do with our, our garden area. Uh, but it'll be some time, maybe this fall, maybe next spring, uh, before we've got sufficient um, meat on the bones to, to bring together a proposal where we could actually answer the questions and know your answers uh, on, the, on the larger issue of, of, of uh, grazing animals. Council will have to have a public hearing on this as well, is that correct? In the sense that it would be an ordinance, right. I mean, they, so in, in essence, we can pass this out of here tonight with whatever conditions we put on it, and it'll still go to council for final review and input even from Jason at that point. That's correct, and I would I would advise the commission to make sure that uh, you know the utilities concerns are completely satisfied at the council level if they go that route. That way, that there's some agreement between the applicant and our sewer utility, whether that be what was proposed tonight or whatever else, that there be something that's copacetic in that between both parties in order to move this forward. I mean, the same condition could be made, right? Reach an agreement on access for maintenance of utilities. An agreement has not been reached. Is that a condition that we could put on this if we passed it tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Well, well I, I, disagree. I, mean, that seems I disagree because an, agree sloppy, an, an agreement was reached. And John brought that agreement to planning mm -hmm. tonight, okay? The, the college then came and said, no, they'd like to change it, okay? So <laughs> to, to me, we got one or two options is to, as planning, we could agree with uh, the college 
and, and approve it with the option, or we approve it with what uh, staff and the planner is bringing to us, and then when it goes to council, the college could bring up their objection at that point. Mm -hmm. Correct? That's correct. You know, before the full council, and, it, and at that time, you would have Jason there to then be able to answer the concerns of the, of the college to council, and then council would make the final decision. Or the third option is we could continue this next month. <laughs> Correct. Let's see. See, in, see that the next council meeting is they're planning a working session, basically. The next council meeting is the, on the, the sidewalks. The, 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 yeah. the sidewalk discussion. So. Well, this would need to be advertised, and yeah. it wouldn't make it until June. Yeah, it wouldn't make it until June. No, and then we'd have to write the legal description and get yeah. all that stuff together as well. There, there is some time. So, so the, the you know, even if we approve it as submitted now, there is. I'm, I'm addressing Judy and Chris. There would be time for the. the the college to get with Jason, or would that be inappropriate? Well, I mean, there actually would be significant amounts of discussion because um, we'd have to get the legal description. Uh, we'd have to have discussions about what language would actually go in the easement. This would be a fairly complicated easement uh, given the parameters of the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm, given the discussion here, I, I, I think there's going to be some give and take. Uh, right. How that language would appear mm -hmm. in the die in, in the recorded e the document would want to, want to record as the easement. So the short answer to your question is yes, there would be time. So why are is planning commission not seeing the language of a uh, proposed easement? Well, it starts with we don't have a legal description of the land that would be involved in that because. That that's part of the process of getting the easement written. And then we would want to define, which we didn't know until today, what we're talking about a 13 foot swath. Uh, and uh, again, that's just that's part of the process. And that usually happens after planning commission mm -hmm. approves it? Typically. Because right they need to incorporate whatever conditions we place mm -hmm. on okay. it as well into that. Right now, this is a planning yeah. level discussion. Okay. Once it goes to council, that's it's a legal. Fine. That's fine. Yes. Curious. Okay. Well, with all that being said, um, I mean, I, th I think there's some ideas here that have been discussed. Um, we can continue having a discussion, or we can just try to put together a motion and see where we are. Well, I'd like to move that uh, we accept the uh, staff's recommendation uh, with the conditions. So the four conditions, the 13 foot easement, the fence on the north side only, um, no grazing within six feet of the sewer manhole, and the cul-de-sac being addressed as needed That's in the future. Right. So I have a, I guess a point of order. Can we discuss this now or does it have to be seconded before we discuss it? I think we need to, we have to second it second. and then we can discuss it. And, and your second is meaningless except that it moves the topic mm -hmm. forward for discussion, so. And then we vote on it. Correct. So I'll second that. <laughs> well, my concern of just passing as it is, and I, I understand what Jerry said is, you know, there was an agreement and then suddenly tonight all this new information has come up. I'm concerned about passing something that we know that they are saying they don't want. 
um, the, the fencing only on the north side and that they don't want the, they want the gates. And Jason, who is not here to defend wanting the gates, wants the gates. So that, bought, that troubles me just to pass something that we know there are problems. Um, I, I guess, would prefer to pass something leaving out the fencing that um, then let the council <laughs> deal with that issue because it would give them more time. But I, and Chris, you have to answer this for me. Uh, when it comes to council, can new items be added to what planning has recommended? I think that they can. I haven't looked at that issue, Jerry, because mm -hmm. I'm going to go back and look at the code because uh, this is the first time that it's come up um, that I can think of. Judy, can you recall? Yeah, I, they, they, they can because they certainly they have. Have, they have. Uh, imposed their will upon the zoning code. So I <laughs> say that, yeah, once it gets to the council level, you can, that's your ordinance. You can so they can take things off as well as add things on. Is that correct? Yes. Is there one that's more difficult than the other? I, there would be, what I would expect is that if Planning Commission approves, what Planning Commission would approve, there would be a resolution or an ordinance drafted to mirror what that approval was, and that would be the document by which council would be, have their discussions, and then they could, um, ask that it be the ordinance be written to reflect what they want done. I would like to replace the limit fencing along easement to the north side of the easement with reach an agreement on access for maintenance of utilities and then I'd be comfortable with the motion to approve the application to re recommend it to council. That's I, I'm, I'm agreeing with Susan, I think. Um, I, would, I would rather um, leave it a little bit more open and, and stipulate that the village and the college reach an agreement on access for maintenance of utilities like we did last meeting um, instead of limit fencing along easement to the north side of the easement. I, I think an agreement needs... I mean, I know that it was met, but they're not, you know, they don't want to do that anymore. And um, I think that there needs to be more discussion happening, and I don't think it needs to happen in Planning Commission. I think it can happen in Council. Just as a comment, I don't think that, my feeling is that Council is not going to accept a recommendation of that nature in an ordinance that you would need to carve out some time that that agreement, those agreements be reached, which is not, I mean, that's quite doable, that the agreement be reached before the ordinance ever goes to yes, council. Right. Okay, well, okay. we have a resolution mm -hmm. that's been made. A motion. A motion, rather. And, uh, and it's been seconded, so um, any more discussion about the language as proposed in this motion? So, Rose, are you moving to make that change? Well, he just said I. Well, I think we do. We need to vote on the motion okay. first. Well, no, because the someone motion would is have stated. Someone would have to second my change, right? So her change needs to be moved and voted on before Jerry's motion. Okay, so Rose, what what language are you suggesting? I'm suggesting replacing the second bullet point in the um, <clears throat> in uh, limit fencing along eas easement to the north side of the easement with the condition that the college and village reach an agreement on access for maintenance of utilities. before it's approved.
So that an agreement regarding fencing be reached between the college and the village. For regarding access. access to utilities. Yeah. Well, regarding fencing specifically, though. Okay, so you want. Regarding fencing with regards to access to utilities. And you think it's appropriate to put a time on there? Is that what you're saying? I know, I'm tossing this over to Chris because from where I'm sitting, I think you need to have that meeting occur so that that language can be brought back to you so that when you pass this on to council, it is mm -hmm. a done deal. Okay, well then, if that's how you feel, Judy, I would retract my motion. Right? <laughs> Just because of how I feel. I mean, I'm, I'm tossing it to Chris. <laughs> Is, if that, if that's, is that your opinion as well? Yes. Okay. And, and the reason is that typically what comes out of the planning commission has definiteness to it. Okay. It is a concrete recommendation that has the I's dotted and the T's crossed um, with limited amounts of, of vagary, and there's still significant vagary in this, simply really yeah. passing it on to council to say, yeah. go, go figure it out and present it to council. You know, the other option is that third one, and that is to continue this next month and have these guys meet with Jason and hammer it out so that we have definite, either definite language that's been agreed upon or that they agree to disagree, and then we have to decide. Can I ask the applicant wh whether they would like us to figure out the fencing issue or council to figure out the fen fencing issue? That's well, no, I, I don't think council. I, from what I heard, is okay. it's, it's got to yeah. be figured out. It's got to be figured out here right? before yeah, it before, be it before goes to council. But if okay, then it sounds like maybe that we need to table this and then ask John and Antioch to come to an agreement and to have Jason come to our next meeting. If we have, so if we have questions, we well, can. first we we need have to. Vote up and down. That's right. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we have a motion. Well, you have, you have a, a motion to amend. That's the first one. That's vote. the first one, okay. Rose. But she, she withdrew, withdrew that motion. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we have a motion to accept the motion to accept the staff recommendations mm -hmm. as they are. And you second You second Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Can call call so, want to call the roll? Oh, certainly. Um, Sims? Yes. Stiles? No. Pelzell? No. Reed? No. And Toby cannot vote on this one, so okay. Yes. Okay. Now, now, do we have a motion to close this hearing and... Well, well, if you close it, then, then the applicant would have to reapply. We don't want to close it then. We want to table it, table it yeah, until table it. Yes. next month. So we just have a motion. I move to table this. Second. <laughs> do, I, do I need to have more on it that I want them to resolve it? <laughs> well, That'll do it. Judy, you want to take the vote? The, the table does it. The tabling accomplishes the same thing. Okay, <laughs> okay Pelzell? Uh, I. Yeah. Yes. Sims? Yes. Styles? Yes. Reed? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> we will continue to work with the applicants on this issue and present an update on the June Planning Commission meeting. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Can I say something with the yes. gates? Yeah. Is it by state that requires that? Because I know the state of Tennessee, power companies and telephone companies have no problems cutting your Chain, right. and then you come back and find a little link on there that says Power mm -hmm. Valley Electric or uh, but, we don't want, but we don't want to do that. Either. But I'm just saying, yeah, they, right. they, do that. they do that as well. Yes, yeah. take your things down. Okay, yeah. next item on the agenda is uh, agenda planning. I guess we know what we're doing next month. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got my report. Should I review my oh, report? You know, that's right. Let's do the staff report too while we're here.
you talking about your planning report? Is that? Yes, this thing right here. Um, it's quite lengthy this mm -hmm. time. Uh, I have a couple of things that I have in here. I have one thing that I don't have in here that I want to talk to you guys about. Um, one is um, brought back some of the language from the May count, uh, the April stat planners report. Um, I do have a couple of paragraphs at the end of the, about uh, the zoning lot. I think I can move forward with, you know, if you guys want me to, I can move forward with the swimming pool regulations, the sidewalk displays for outdoor dining, and uh, and uh, driveway setback requirements. However, um, I do have some issues with the zoning lot definition. Uh, there's a lot of place areas in the village that uh, where property owners have several lots that are uh, together but not combined and uh, the zoning code strictly treats all lot lines as boundaries um, and this is typically separate uh, the separate lots have the ability to be sold off and you know, redeveloped as infill housing um, there's a lot of interior lots as well this goes a little bit further as well with state with building code uh, in my experience as a building inspector uh, the building code treats lot lines as building walls. So every um, every structure that's within, within three feet of a building wall or a lot line has to be fire rated for fire protection, uh, and that's that's in the international residential code. Uh, that's a two-hour fire rated wall. So that means that if I build a house and I'm straddling two lot lines, six feet of that wall on in, in on all applications has to be fire rated, and it kind of really mucks up the building. So I feel like if, I, if we allow this to continue with the zoning lot policy, that we would not actually be doing property owners justice uh, for their properties and for the future use of their properties. Uh, currently, the cost of a replant is $10. That is not changing with the permit fee update. It will still be $10. The cost of applying to the Board of, board of Zoning Appeals for variances will go up to $100 in June. Uh, you know, I have applications right now pending before the Board of Zoning Appeals um, where uh, there's a variance request for lots that, for buildings that tread a lot lines. We have had them in the past. Uh, any building that is built in this manner, if it's whether it be a primary structure or an accessory structure, would have to get a variance. And we would like to make it easier on one hand for property owners to redevelop their properties and improve the properties, but the, on the other hand, we need to consider the long-term implications of not replatting in the village. So I kind of wanted to see where your guys' temperature on this is and which direction we should proceed uh, with this issue. Do you think that, um, I mean, if you replatted, you would just do it on a case-by-case mm -hmm. basis? How would that work? Yeah, so it would be a case the person would come in and say, I want to build a something, a garage or something, and I'd say, well, you have four lots that, you know, you, it consists of your yard, and you so, would have to. So can replatting yeah. be done administratively? I don't think it can, can it? The, I called the county up on this. They only do it if it's a survey. So they would have to hire a surveyor to combine the lots together and then record it at the county, and then, well, they would come to me first with the replat application, then the, I would sign off on it and record it to the county. So there's a process. Um, so so if, I'm, if I'm understanding you correctly, and I'm going to use my example, mm -hmm. okay? I, I have two adjoining lots. Mm -hmm. I have a garage on, a freestanding garage on one lot that mm -hmm. may be less than five feet from the boundary mm -hmm. of the second lot. And then I have a utility shed mm -hmm. on the second lot. So so I could be in violation twice. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. the, the, the shed I know ain't fireproof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know the garage is not fireproof. Yeah. Okay. And if you built a accessory structure there, you'd have to not only apply for variance, but then also get that fire rated wall. Right, okay. Or have it replotted. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, <clears throat> would I have, and let's say for example, I wanted to sell, 
mm -hmm. the whole thing. Okay. Uh, I couldn't sell it the way it is right now. Or could I? You could, you could sell the part, because the way that your deed is written is it mm -hmm. has all these like lots mm -hmm. in it. Right. So I could sell mm -hmm. both of the lots. You can sell, you can sell the individual lots off. Right. And then yeah. wh whoever bought it would have mm -hmm. to deal with it. Mm-hmm. So it's just a, it's a yeah. I, I, I see. What you're it's saying. it's something that is much more common here than a lot of other places, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that um, it should be ignored in the sense that do we want to look at this strict? Do we want to continue looking at this strictly? Do we want to write language that would uh, like the zoning lot definition? Basically, they would come to the village, apply to basically have their lots, their individual lots considered as one lot for the purpose of whatever zoning application is in place. But that doesn't get them out of the building code requirement. Mm -hmm. so, so that's kind of like a, solves one problem but not the other problem, solution. And then the other thing is that, you know, what if they do want to, if they do want to sell a portion of a lot off, then at that point we would have to trigger a replat or a lot subdivision in order to make that happen. So people are um, not replatting and just getting variances, and those variances are being approved? Is that what you're saying? I don't know the history of the variances, although I know that people will, will attempt for vari variances more often than, than not. I'm not sure if they get approved or not. I haven't looked at the record. But my sense is that it is not a special circumstance in this village to have a separate lots together. So you're saying have an administrative option instead of a Board of Zoning Appeals op Correct. option? Correct. Mm -hmm. So essentially the administrative option would be they come to you and they say, if I, if I have two adjoining lots, but I want to build a house across both of them. Mm -hmm. And you say, yes, okay. Yeah, they pay a fee and then we have to treat it like that. It's, the city of Dayton has a definition and a process for that, and that's why I would basically model after I mean, it sounds like that's, that's a lot route. easier than having yeah. to have your property yeah. surveyed, and, and and obviously mm -hmm. then if you try to sell those two, one of those two parcels, then you're kind of. But like I said, it would still trigger the building code requirement. So, <laughs> so the county would still have across. to say, oh, you know, you need to have a fire rate of wall. You, I mean, that's we could like be open about that when mm -hmm. people are applying. Could that be on the application, like PS? The <laughs> PS. <laughs> Building and fire code regulations still apply. <laughs> well, well, what's the accountant's position? What do they say? I haven't actually talked to the county about it yet, but uh, that was one of the discussions I wanted to have with them. I talked to the county surveyor, uh, the county GIS guy, though, so about the process. And they said it had, it's absolutely a survey. Where I, where I worked in northern Kentucky, you could just go to the county and combine the lots, and it was done, yeah. which it was pretty quick and pretty painless. And for some, and, But out here, it's different, so... I think that's what you want to do is find the quickest, easiest, mm -hmm. yeah. pain-free way to do it. Yeah, the county, the, that and does, go into zoning appeals. I mean, that does create yeah. problems for the person in the future or, you know, there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not. So, I mean, the question I guess I'm asking is, like, do we want to try to fix, do we try to want to try to maintain our stance on, on these split lots and try to force replats on them and get them to, do the right thing and for the long term or continue to keep the existing lot lines together with a, a, with a solution that would work on an administrative level but not uh, on any other levels? I think it would be nice to resolve it overall, yeah, to make it an administrative process that they, you know, find. Mm -hmm. And then for you to talk to the county and see if there's any way mm -hmm. to resolve it. And if there's not, then obviously people will have to get it surveyed. Because it, it sounds to me like there are, will be people who want to, in fact, I have two lots like mm -hmm. that. <laughs> and I will probably want to be doing something and may need to do that. There's an entire section of the village where there's a house built on like three or four lots, yeah. you know, yeah. and they're all right. really tiny. Yeah. So that, that would make, <laughs> make sense in all sorts of ways after yeah. looking at this map so many years, how many houses are on three and four yeah. and five mm -hmm. and six lots. So uh, per property. Mm -hmm. So the read I'm getting from you guys is to move, to look at the zoning lot definition and, and go that that route. All right. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Makes sense. I mean, 
All right, next item is grass cutting ordinance. Uh, I was preparing to enforce this and I found out that we don't actually enforce it until July 1st. So uh, I kind of just want to, want to get your guys' read on the grass cutting ordinance. Uh, from April, basically the, the page here says from April to uh, July, uh, there's nesting habitat for wildlife, so you can leave your grass grow. After that, you have to mow your grass back uh, 10 feet from the front line, five from the side. In the rear, unless your adjacent property owner gives you permission to not mow it. So. So yeah. does that mean that if the adjacent property owners are fine with your not cutting it, then you don't have to? Exactly. Okay. But that's only for the side and rear, not for the front. Not for the front. The front. The front. The first ten feet are non-negotiable. The front mm -hmm. ten feet. After mm -hmm. July first. After July first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Starting one. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this was probably part of a 40 hour discussion that crafted that language. 40 hour discussion in the 1970s, I think. I'm not sure that, really? that we want to do anything yeah. with it other than yeah. leave it alone. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm intending to enforce it. I just want to, you know, go, run it by you guys first, make sure that I would, when I'm addressing it the correct way, that it's right. only the first 10 feet and then You'll five on the side. 12 and inches. The, the people that At 12 inches, yeah. 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 How, yes. how they're. Yeah. So I'll be out there with my ruler, my one foot ruler, you need to measuring talk to Ed, the uh, Amline about the system. Yeah. You'll talk to Ed Amline because he might give you a little insight on what he ran into with that as well. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then be before we get to summer meetings, um, I do want to review a situation developing with the BP gas station with you guys. Um, it appears that they are. Uh, erecting a tent in the in a quadrant of the uh, the area, which, according to the minutes from the June 10th, 2013 meeting, is a is a no-no. So, um, erecting what? Uh, as part of their conditional use of approval for uh, having uh, commercial sales on their site. Erecting tents. Tents. Yeah. So the tents or canopies. 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 Yes. Canopies. So, just to clarify. Uh, we told them they couldn't have any. Correct. Is that what you said? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, and I, it mainly is because Bonadies, uh, those windows get blocked um, by those those canopies, and it's a conditional use, and that was a condition we placed on them. I actually spoke to Jane Nipper about this on Saturday, so I don't know. I remind her of that. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it on Saturday when I was running, and I was yeah, like, they not at what, at what time? Where did you? Um, well, actually, I saw it Sunday morning. Oh, they were still up? It's they the, were setting it up. It was, yeah. yeah, they were setting it up uh, Saturday, I think I saw. Mm. Well, it says here, the, the third condition is that the only non-food non mobile vendor will be permitted along the southwest property line adjacent to 220 Xenia Avenue and will be restricted to display height of six feet so that they will not visually <coughs> interfere with the inner neighboring use. Um, the thing is, is that the conditional the, the terms of the, the the tent is discussed earlier on, but it is not an actual condition. It's just the height is the condition. Just the height is the condition. The is about the, having yeah. a food truck parked there and things yeah. like that. So they, they moved the food truck to the other side, but yeah. but the canopies appear to be higher than six feet. I so think I think there's I, I remember Lori asking being vehement on this on the subject. There, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's in those minutes. It is in the minutes, yes, right. but it's not in the conditions, conditions. of approval. And that's so it's just what I'm trying to get clarification on. Because there's discussion about the tent and that we that there was a feeling that the tent should not be allowed, but then there's the height, and I believe the height was intended to restrict the tent, perhaps. Because um, right now, if they don't have the canopy on the tent, they have the skeleton of the tent. Right. And, it's and six feet tall too. it appears that the rest of the, the display items are six feet um, because there's a comment about needing to limit it to the height of a standard van, which actually is higher than six feet, I think. So um, I'm monitoring this. I'm going to be sending them a letter reminding them of the conditions. Um, I just wanted to get, make sure you guys were aware of it and to kind of get some clarification as to what where you guys are coming from with that. So with that. Move on to summer hours. And uh, basically, 
uh, we will have a June meeting as demonstrated tonight, <laughs> uh, but for, and possibly a July meeting. Uh, however, uh, between July 22nd and August 10th, I will be in Malaysia as part of the International Fellows Program. And I didn't get a chance to talk, to introduce our International Fellows tonight, and they should come up and introduce themselves again <laughs> to the Planning Commission. And they have been quietly sitting in the back. Ladies, don't be shy. And uh, observing their Planning Commission meeting. And, Welcome to town. <laughs> Hi, hello. Uh, I'm Nadia Faradina Jalawi. I'm from Malaysia. And my focus here is more towards sustainable energy. I would like to learn how far Yellow Spring has grown towards sustainable energy. Thank you. Cool. So they're, they're here with us this month and working very hard on renewable energy and looking at our internet policies and our community engagement activities. So they've been taking in a lot of information and enjoying the village life. Uh, but I will be going nice. over to Malaysia to uh, work with Nadia uh, at the end of July and August. So I won't be available for a meeting then. We'll just yeah. have any applications that come in <coughs> going to the September meeting September. at that time. So we'll have the June meeting because we'll, we have the item that we were on the table. And we may or may not have a July, depending on if there are applications <coughs> yeah. okay. or continuations of applications. Yes. <laughs> so uh, just to let everyone know, I'm not going to be here. I'm, I'll be out of town in July or June, June 8th, oh. which is the second okay. Tuesday, second Monday. Okay. So that means we're down to three, which is still a quorum. We're okay there. Are we okay, Chris? No, you're okay. Okay. And you do have Adam here, so. But it's a continuation, continuation of the hearing. But he's well, here. Because he wasn't here last week. Yeah, he um, missed last week. So at, I actually had that question about Tim. So or can Tim and Adam jump in at this point, Chris, oh. if they were here for well, this? The last time we this issue came up was with the solar array, and we determined that Jerry could not participate, I think, because Lori was here for this the summer. Was the other way no, around? No, it was the other way around. around. Right. Um, I'd have to pull out my old notes on that, but I think let's assume that you can't vote. You can you can participate in the sense of ask questions and and have input, but ultimately on the voting aspect of it, because you weren't here for everything, that was the position we took on the, the solar array. Okay. But this is a little different too, in the sense that we've revisited it so many times. times. So right. let, let me let me explore that because. Mm -hmm. um, this will be the how many times? This will be the third time. Next month will be the third, third time. time. Yeah. Okay. So Adam, you're on next month. Cool. And and we're thinking that Tim may be able to participate. I'll look at it again. Yeah. Good. Yes. Okay. 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 If, if you're if you're done, I just have a quick thing that you guys you folks can do afterwards, which is that <clears throat> if you're following what's going on in council, uh, each of the board of commission members is being asked to sign a, a statement of roles and responsibilities, which essentially indicates that you understand your role and responsibility with regard to your commission. And I will pass them out, and then you can think, do the signing, contemplating, etc. And one copy will come back to me, and one copy uh, remains with you. <coughs> okay. Is that a requirement? Yes. Okay. Okay, it sounds like we are finished. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. I'll second. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Opposed? Aye.